Fox News alert now. We're getting a lot of reaction now from the Supreme Court's major decision announced an hour ago against organized labor. 5-4 ruling that public sector unions cannot collect mandatory fees from non-union workers. Mark Mix, National Right to Work Foundation president, with me now live from the steps of the Supreme Court. And sir, good morning to you. You've been working on this case for 40 years, I believe. What do you think about the decision that came down today, sir? Well, Bill, we're very excited about it. It's a great day for individual employees, independent-minded employees, not only in Illinois, but across the country. Every government worker in America is now protected from being fired for failure to tender dues to, or fees to a union. And it is a result of a 40-year legal effort going all the way back to 1977 when this court decided in a 6-3 decision that a worker could be fired for failure to tender dues or fees. That's over now. Wow. What, yeah. what is the effect on unions? Because well, there's no at, effect, at the though. heart of this, though, yeah. it, it's money. And they will be receiving yeah. a lot less money. What's the effect of that? I think that's right. What it requires them to do is go out and sell a product. In order to get money from workers now, they've got to provide services, and we think that's the role they should have. The fact is, is that they've had this legal privilege to compel people who want to work for their own government to pay them a fee for that privilege. Those days are over. They're going to have to go out and sell product to uh, independent-minded workers and workers in general who want, to, who want them to speak for them, and they're going to have to collect that money by providing good service. That's what uh, so expl about. explain the victory for those non-union workers who were given a slice of their paycheck to the union. Yeah, in 22 states, roughly 5 million workers are compelled as a condition of their employment to pay a fee to a private organization to work for government. Those workers today have been freed from that burden. They, they can choose to support the union. They can send their money if they want. They can send all their money if they want, but they can't be required. And that's yeah. really the simplicity of this case. What, what, what we've seen a lot of 5-4 decisions lately, just in the past yeah. two weeks. What does that suggest to you as a court observer? Well, yeah, these, are, these are major issues. And, and obviously, this case has been in front of the court several times. This is about the sixth time that this case has been back in front of the court. They tried to regulate it and slice it thinner and thinner and thinner. And finally, they were left with the final decision. Are we going to free these people? Are they going to be protected by the First Amendment or not? So I'm not surprised by the decision. The fact that it's narrow gives you an idea of how polarizing this issue is and what it means from a money standpoint from organized labor. They're, uh, they're really, really but, stinging but, You today. know, whether you're a, I know the court case has been decided, but whether you're a union worker or not, if you're a non-union worker and part of your paycheck's going to the union and they're arguing your behalf to give you good labor rights, isn't there, I mean, that, that's, that's the essence of the argument here, is it not? Well, that's what they would say, and that's a very topically appealing argument. But at the bottom line, they're the exclusive monopoly bargaining agent for every single employee. That means an employee can't speak with his employer. If the employer speaks with them, it's an unfair labor practice charge. Hmm. It's just ridiculous for them to say, we want this power to speak for all workers. And oh, by the way, because we have this privilege, we want to force them to pay for it, too. That's hmm. an outrage. We solved that problem today. Janice is the person who brought the case. He's from Illinois. Are you from Illinois, sir? I am not. I'm from Virginia. We, we okay. represented Mark Janice. Uh, we started the case in the Seventh Circuit. We brought it all the way to the Supreme Court. Our attorney, okay. Bill Messenger, I get from it. the Right to Work Foundation, argued it. the case. Last question. Why did it take yeah. 41 years to win, if you think it's so <laughs> obvious and apparent? Well, because we had to convince the court, and they had to come back numerous times to decide that the First Amendment was in play. The idea of strict scrutiny of constitutional rights is the question on the table. The Supreme Court finally got it right. Mark Mix. Congratulations, I should say. You've been fighting this battle for four decades. Thank you, sir, Thanks, for being Bill. here today. You bet. Thank you. Pleasure. Mark.